All right. So, um, yeah, the idea was to have a bit of a discussion about local Kubernetes solutions, um, what their pros and cons are. And, um, oh, we have Emanuela from Garden.io joining. Hello, welcome. And another otter. Um, yes, so the idea was to uh, talk about local Kubernetes solutions. Um, and I'm also going to uh, present a bit about my findings, um, but I'd also be very interested in your thoughts about them because also like as developers, I think you've, you've, you've been even more in touch with them actually than, than I have. Um, so yes, let's get going. Um, first one today is Minikube. Um, and so we'll always take a look at a couple of different uh, criteria. And the first one is like, how easy is the setup? And does it also work on uh, other OSs than Linux? Um, and Minikube can be installed via Boo on macOS, um, can also be installed on Windows, um, and you can run it on a couple of VMs that you can easily um, specify. And um, on uh, macOS, it works quite nicely with HyperKit, um, which is the same solution that Docker Desktop is actually using. Um, in terms of networking, Minikube um, has a quite rich um, CLI and you can use um, two handy commands, Minikube tunnel, which connects to a load balancer service or Minikube service, which returns the URL to connect to a service. And that way you can work, um, you can have some networking experience on your local Kubernetes without even having to get into ingress at all. Um, but what if you need ingress because um, you want to um, you want to have your local Kubernetes to um, to look uh, like your actual production Kubernetes uh, as much as possible? If you also want to test stuff around ingress, um, then there is a, an add-on in Minikube. You you can just run uh, Minikube add-on ingress, I think, and that um, installs an ingress controller, an Nginx ingress controller. And so when you run Garden with the local Kubernetes provider, um, Garden auto, auto detects a mini cube cluster based on the name of your cube context. And um, it will not install an ingress controller um, with any manifests, um, but will just actually um, enable the ingress add-on from Minikube. Um, what I quite like about Minikube is that the way they go about DNS, um, because like usually the only um, possibility that you have with local Kubernetes is that you create a bunch of um, records in your Etsy hosts file and um, point them to localhost. And I find this quite annoying because you can't have wildcards in there and it's just a not very handy. Um, and so Minikube allows you to um, read, add a resolver. Like this is something that you can, you can do anyway. Um, you, you just add a file in Etsy resolver and you just um, put, um, like you basically just write a tiny bit of config, which is also um, in their documentation. Um, and in this config, you basically just say, oh, for this domain, let's just call it test.garden, um, please use this name server. And the name server is then your Minikube VM. And you can just um, install an add-on in Minikube, which is called ingress-dns. Uh, and then you have a DNS server running in your Minikube cluster, and that picks up all the new ingresses that you install in that cluster and um, creates DNS records for them. And so you just have a local DNS server running that automatically has all the new uh, ingresses. And uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, this is really helpful. Um, what else? Yes, so the pros I think are, it's quite, uh, it's easy. Uh, it has an easy management um, of all those add-ons. 
um, there's a huge coverage of, of add-ons. You can even get a service mesh running and, and on all kinds of stuff just by running Minikube add-on service mesh enable or something like that. And I think it also shines in terms of documentation because uh, I think lots of these local Kubernetes solutions are really, really bad on documentation. Like you have to dig deep just to find out on what kind of like VM solution they're running or stuff like that. Um, and if it if if something doesn't work out, especially around networking, it's it's really hard to get by good information. And I think Minikube shines a bit more uh, in terms of documentation. Um, it works with Garden out of the box. There is no uh, additional setup needed. It just works. Um, what are the cons? There is no UI for management, so you don't have something like this Docker desktop um, app. Uh, where you can, um, yeah, you just you need to do everything uh, via CLI, and so yeah, maybe because of that, the installation and configuration is a bit more complex than just installing Docker Desktop and clicking Enable Kubernetes. Um, but it's 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 fairly simple as well. So next uh, we have Kind. Mm. Kind can also be installed with Brew uh, on macOS, um, and Kind runs in a Docker container, so it doesn't run in a VM. So that means you definitely also need to have Docker desktop running, which is a bit of a downside, of course. And um, yeah, if you want to use Ingress, you need to create the Kind cluster with those extra port map mappings and um, node labels, otherwise it won't work. Um, we also have that on our uh, documentation on docs.garden.io, but there is a local Kubernetes uh, guide and um, like the things that are needed to make uh, those different solutions work with Garden are also there. And um, yeah, and when you run Garden in a kind cluster, Garden installs an Nginx ingress controller that works with kind. So it's a specific, uh, it's, it's, it's also Nginx, but the manifests uh, are uh, like they, they work with whatever, like the specifics that kind needs with these ports and stuff. Um, yeah, and with DNS, you don't get any, any nice add-ons or so you just have to uh, create, basically have to create a uh, like if you want to call your ingresses uh, by their by their uh, domain name, you need to um, create DNS entries and Etsy hosts uh, that point to localhost. So the pros, in my opinion, are it's relatively easy to set up programmatically. So it's it's quite easy to spin up kind clusters in CI. Um, it also works with Garden out of the box. Um, the cons are there's very little documentation on how it actually works. Uh, there's also no UI for management and you can't use in cluster building. Um, so you're still absolutely, you rely completely uh, on Docker running on your local machine. Uh, then we have the classic uh, Docker desktop. Um, the setup is of course quite easy. Um, so, you just download it and install it, and then it runs on a HyperKit VM uh, on macOS. And um, this one does not come up with any pre-installed Ingress controller. So you, as a user, can install whatever Ingress controller you prefer. If you run a garden project with the local Kubernetes provider in a Docker desktop um, cluster, uh, garden will install an Nginx ingress controller. Um, and here for DNS, you also uh, have to fall back on any Etsy host entries for local host. Um, pros. So um, I think the biggest pro is that it's one solution for building and managing container images as well as local Kubernetes. It's just this one thing. It's quite easy to install and um, it covers both aspects of uh, running containers in Kubernetes and building and managing them. Um, 
yeah, and it's very easy to install. Um, cons are, of course, the uh, new Docker desktop licensing model, um, which is why a lot of people are even considering uh, looking at other options. And I also am not very happy with the amount of documentation about Docker desktop per se. Um, yes. And then we have the newest addition to the local Kubernetes mix, which is Rancher desktop. Um, so the download and install is also quite easy. Um, you also get a UI uh, where you can uh, manage uh, your um, images and you can manage uh, whether you want to, um, how you want to, how you want to run Kubernetes on your local machine. And it runs K3S on a Lima VM uh, on macOS. And um, you can choose between uh, container D and Docker D for a container runtime. So here you, you actually get the option to completely get rid of Docker at all. Um, however, like if you want to, like you can also use Rancher Desktop um, like Docker Desktop for building your images and, and uh, managing them, tagging them, whatever, um, with the tool called NerdCTO. And this tool, NerdCTO, um, has the like it has the exact same commands as Docker, so you just basically you can just create uh, an alias uh, for Docker to NerdCTL and it it should work. So I haven't tried it like in all the details, but that's that's what they say. Um, yes, and then of course it it does everything Docker related in that VM, and uh, but in that VM there is a container D runtime. Um, in terms of ingress, uh, it's a bit tricky, or I mean, not necessarily tricky, but it's maybe not what everyone is used to per se. Um, so Rancher Desktop is quite opinionated. It comes with a pre-installed traffic ingress controller and a clipper load balancer. And uh, the way this works, uh, let me see. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. I cut out a little bit of information here, but that's fine. Um, so the way this works is that um, the, uh, like you, 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 you create an ingress and the traffic ingress controller picks it up. And then um, this uh, clipper uh, load balancer um, brings up a daemon set um, that proxies like the daemon set um, opens the ports 80 and 443 on the nodes or mostly on the node because usually it's just one node on your local laptop and then uh, creates a proxy to the ingress controller. And at this point, like it, it, it clashes quite hard. Like if you try to install a, another um, ingress controller that also tries to block these, these uh, node ports. Um, like for example, the garden ingress controller so for so like if you um if you run garden and you you have to disable the uh garden installed ingress controller at the moment um because it will clash with with um, this traffic clipper setup that's already there and um in terms of dns um you can also create etsy host entries uh, however, in this case, you need to find out what the gateway address of the local VM's bridge network is. Uh, you can do that with IP tools. And um, here we can see uh, that was on my laptop. Um, the bridge, um, this like here on the INET section, we have the gateway of this slash 24 network. And um, you can just add something like demo app garden. Um, and this, uh, this gateway address to Etsy hosts. And then you can also resolve your ingress uh, host names. Um, 
pros. It's easy to install and use, and it's a full alternative to Docker Desktop um, because it also allows image management with Nerd CTL. Like you can do everything without Docker. Uh, cons like the Clipper LB traffic ingress solution is not optimal for all use cases. It's quite hard to get rid of them. Actually, you have to uh, go into the config of the VM and there's not a lot of documentation about that and, and have to try to find out how to um, get rid of these solutions. So there is not like a super easy um, add-on management like there is with Minikube. Um, in terms of integration with Garden, um, I spoke about this a bit before. Um, so we have to take care to set this ingress controller, um, to set up ingress controller to false here and to actually point the context to Rancher Desktop because um, Rancher Desktop is not auto-detected in the local Kubernetes provider as of yet. And Garden does not also yet integrate with NerdCTL to build images. So for builds on the local machine, you need to have the Docker Desktop running alongside it. So you can uh, build your images with Docker but you can also, of course also use Kaniko um, or cluster build kit to build the images in the local cluster. And then you, 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 not, you don't have to rely on Docker. Yes, and this is the uh, final question. Can we get rid of Docker desktop at all? And um, I mean, this, this whole, uh, like everything I've been talking about was super Mac OS centric, I know. So uh, for, for anyone listening and who's using Linux, they're probably shaking their head and uh, asking themselves like, yes, of course we can. Um, but um, for, for a lot of users, Docker Desktop um, has been uh, quite integral um, for, 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 for Docker, uh, for using Docker and containers locally. Um, so, Yes, we can get rid of Docker Desktop, but it requires us to rely on building the container images in the respective cluster, which can be easily done with Garden um, by either choosing Kaniko or Cluster Build Kit. Um, so the only solution this doesn't work with is Kind because Kind runs in a Docker container, and then you cannot build those Docker images in a Docker container in Kind. Um, but you can. Um, yeah, so to facilitate that, you can either use a remote registry uh, to share the cache with your colleagues or use an in-cluster registry uh, for minimal effort and um, getting started quickly. And that's it uh, from my end. How, how do you use local Kubernetes? I, can, I haven't used local Kubernetes for the longest time, uh, to be honest. Uh, I even got stuck on like a way old version of, I, I used to use Docker desktop before, uh, played around with Minikube uh, a little bit as well, but after I got the taste, taste of, I suppose, remote development environments, I've almost solely been using that, even for like, you know, basic, uh, uh, testing basic things. So uh, for instance, all of the example projects uh, in, in the garden repo, they all also like kind of connect to a remote cluster. So they kind of have two provider configurations, one for running them remotely and one for running them locally. And well, I suppose what happened is that at some point, uh, my local Docker desktop Kubernetes uh, setup uh, went into some funky state. And even after resetting it and re you know, updating Docker desktop, it, it wouldn't start. So, uh, so I've basically been going all remote ever since then. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Emmanuel, have you been have you been playing around with or using local Kubernetes at all? Uh, rarely. Um, what I usually do, if I have to do some very quick tests. Um, I use lo uh, local Kubernetes, uh, especially because in our current setup, we have to since we use remote uh, uh, remote building, we have to add uh, the images to the images path to the ECR. So sometimes if I want to do a very quick test, I will just use local, local Kubernetes. But yeah, to be honest, that's, that's mostly it. like in terms of experiments, yes, but not for actual development at all. 
Right. Can... Yeah, I'm also using uh, local Kubernetes for this reverse proxy setup. So I'm using Docker desktop as the simplest and kind of easy to kick off distribution. Cool. I, I'd be curious to know, Anna, as, as you were kind of researching this, uh, did you, were you able to kind of uh, compare the performance of these uh, different solutions? And, and when I say performance, I'm mostly thinking in terms of like, you know, uh, a stress that they put on, on, on one's laptop. Did one feel more lightweight than the other? Should we make the K3S? Mm, I, I would guess that K3S is a bit more light, lightweight. Um, Uva, can you maybe mute yourself? I think we have some oh, kind of echo yeah, sure, here. Sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, but I... I like I haven't been using them for anything real. I've just like set up a small demo project and uh, and took a look at the configuration mostly and how difficult it is to get a um, decent network set up because I always find that's the like hardest part. But I cannot really say anything about performance. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Because I'm wondering for like, uh... You know, small stacks like there, there are, there are certainly uh, occasions where, you know, just developing fully locally makes sense. Say you're not like you know part of a large team, and so the whole caching story of like remote environments doesn't really apply. Maybe you have a small enough stack where that just works. So, for those use cases and those contexts, I'm thinking if kind of for instance K3S would be a good alternative. To Docker Compose, whether like, uh, yeah, I suppose just how, how the two compare with, you know, where you're just running Docker, Com like, assuming you like maybe you're using volume mounts uh, with Docker Compose, you could be using uh, hot loading with Garden, kind of just, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see kind of a had to have comparison of the two, I suppose. You mean Docker Desktop or Docker? No, like, like literally just Pose. like running Docker Compose. Yes, okay. like, yeah. So without basically, you know, uh, uh, the Kubernetes API server, like managing things for you, uh, and just uh, leaning on kind of volume mounts as opposed to if you were using Garden and using something like K3S, I'm assuming you would use dev mode to <clears throat> try update your stuff. Yeah, I think you you would need to mm -hmm. because uh, like you still have that VM between your local file system and uh, your containers in K3S. At least on on Mac, so mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, even if you if you use host volumes, it would not be on your actual host. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I guess I'm mostly wondering if if K3S is lightweight enough to compete uh, with Docker Compose strictly in terms of the stress it puts on your laptop running, say, a relatively small stack. Yeah. It would be interesting to benchmark it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just like, a, you know, place a thermometer next to your laptop and see whether it heats <laughs> up more <laughs> depending on uh, which local Kubernetes or Docker solution you're testing. Yeah, so my laptop was quite stressed today, but it was mostly because I probably ran all of those solutions at the same time. Oh, OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. But does any has anyone ever used Minikube? I was like, I was surprised. Like, I think this is what I would choose actually. Um, but I feel like nobody's really using it. Not for a lot. I used to use it uh, back in the day, but haven't haven't for a long like, you know, maybe like a year and a half ago, something like that. Uh, Docker Desktop felt like mm, just a lot more stable and robust mm. compared to Minikube. But, you know, that's quite a while ago. And I can imagine that uh, uh, Minikube has improved since then. And I'm also thinking on Mac OS. I never, I haven't really heard people complain on, on Linux. So, so that might also be a, a, another data point to, to consider. So what's your favorite way of running uh, container stuff on Linux, Dimitri? 
Uh, mostly just uh, mostly just Docker or even Podman because it runs serverless. Uh, but uh, I've been playing. I've got I've got Kind running locally, but I haven't really gotten gotten too far with it. I used to use Minikube back in back in the day, but never 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 with Garden. But uh, I guess the I guess the Minikube um, knock has always been that it's uh, too resource intensive, and that and that that's where Kind mm. and uh, and the K3s K3d uh, world has uh, uh, offers some offers some promise, so I'm tr I'm going with kind right now. But I've just started kind of like playing with it and getting my setup working. Cool, yeah. But I can I can I can definitely see uh, a case for like, <clears throat> you know, being able to like in, in a configuration just like a trivially hop between like a, a remote Kubernetes provider, local yeah. Kubernetes provider. Having both things set up, kind of depending on what you're working on, and and you know, really testing certain things, especially for larger stacks where like you maybe only need to like run a subset of your stack, and you can just do that locally, and that's fine. But if you say in your staging environment, the different environments, you want to get a uh, more realistic version up and running, you can truly really just switch to that. I think that's maybe a a workflow we haven't discussed much. Usually, like you're you're all in on either like fully remote or fully you know local kubernetes yeah i guess one thing that i, I didn't understand from this presentation is because that i never thought the docker desktop was even in the kubernetes space like i thought it was just running like the docker daemon directly so like it like if it's possible to use docker desktop can we just use docker daemon like just like the like uh like do you have to have anything installed other than docker if you if docker desktop will work uh so do you you mean for Running Kubernetes or for like for for what? For yeah, like for yeah, not, I mean, Docker Desktop is not Kubernetes, right? No, but it it just deploys uh, Kubernetes inside this VM that Docker Desktop brings up anyway. I see. So then, but but what are you installing there? Like the 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 the, the normal Kubernetes distro, or or are you then running something else on on top of Docker Desktop? Mm, I'm not sure what if, if it's a vanilla like uh, upstream Kubernetes that Docker Desktop is deploying. Mm -hmm. So this is all of the kind of stuff that I find really hard to get by in terms of documentation. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah not sure. I didn't even I didn't even know there was it's like I thought Docker Desktop was just kind of like a graphical interface to Docker Daemon. I didn't think it was. Uh, I did, uh, and yeah, running it in VMs on on incompatible operating systems like Mac. Yeah, all, um, you, all you get is like one little checkbox where you can say enable Kubernetes or mm -hmm. you can check it or uncheck it. And okay. then like if you check it, then there is a Kubernetes context called Docker Desktop there. Okay. I, you can I know, interact I, yeah. with it. And yeah, I think, never, never, yeah. never yeah. used that. From, from, that point of view, is, sorry, from that point of view, it's actually quite, a, quite handy because you don't have to do anything essentially. You just install yeah, yeah. A, an executable, and then you have a Kubernetes cluster running. And then, and then, and then your laptop that's melts. It. Yeah, that that's a separate issue. <laughs> but if you want to Break just run, run, yeah, run, but you say, but, but it's you, easy. But you know, it just it takes you five minutes. But you can turn your heat in your apartment way down because then your laptop will kind of like supplement the radiator. I, I see where you're coming from, though, uh, Dimitri. Like it, uh, I'm not sure like what the like who came up with the idea or what the, you know, historical reasons are for, you know, this Docker desktop product to just kind of bundle Kubernetes on the side. It feels, mm -hmm. it feels slightly random, maybe not now, but like, you know, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly, I think it was like flagged as experimental uh, way in the mm -hmm. beginning. Uh, I think so, but yeah, it's, uh, I, w I wonder what the reasoning was behind that, like kind of on their end. But it's yeah, it's certainly been useful. Maybe maybe they, when they realized that Docker Swarm was not going anywhere, they mm -hmm. <laughs> just decided to try to maintain people on their products. Has anybody ever things. has anybody ever tried Docker Desktop for Linux? I mean, I know such a thing exists, but I've never ever tried it. No, oh. no. Why, why? Why would you like? Why? Well, if, it gives you, if it gives you if it gives you an instant Kubernetes, then maybe that's <laughs> yeah. The, uh, Oh, that's a good point. <clears throat> I mean, I guess there are even certain scenarios where it's like quite handy to have that Kubernetes cluster uh, isolated in a VM, even in the Nux. Like, mm -hmm. even if you can run containers directly yeah. on your host, it, it, it might be useful to have them. Yeah. 
So I, I did have a setup at one point where I had uh, where I was using like libvirt virtualization to like containerize like Minikube inside of like libvirt VMs <laughs> uh, in order so I could have multiple Kubernetes setups in the same time or OpenShift setups actually because I was Red Hat then. Um, but uh, that was a pain and then very complicated to set up. So Samir, you were asking something on the chat. Hello, Samir, by the way. So do we have a, so is your, anyone, is, you, it, yeah. is, is your audio not working? I can read it out um, yeah. just okay. for the, the purposes of the recording. Um, so Mia says, is anyone using Terraform or similar things to deploy single node Kubernetes to a VM to be used locally on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, et cetera? Um, yes, then my mic is out. <laughs> <laughs> So to, 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 to deploy, to use Terraform uh, for, Terraform for laptops, mm -hmm. run Terraform on laptops, basically. Like, like, using, like using, ter using Terraform provision your own laptop with Kubernetes. Or, uh, yeah, a, a VM on your, on your laptop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, but I, I have another call. I can hop out now, but I'll, I'll leave, okay. leave you to it. Bye, AC. Cheers, yeah. Bye. Yeah, I've never, um, I've never, no, I've never tried I've never that. Done that. <laughs> it sounds interesting. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure you can do anything sensible uh, yeah. because, I mean, money. I mean because I'm, Terraform, I, you always need APIs. And what APIs are you going to call on your local, uh, on your local like laptop? Maybe you can run like Cloud Foundry on your local laptop and then, I don't know. I'm sure there is some <laughs> solution that can facilitate this. I'm not I think sure I, I it's think going, I, yeah. I think you can do it with Ansible for sure. Like with Ansible, you can create an Ansible, uh, you can create an Ansible playbook that will that will install Kubernetes on your local laptop. But my, like I, I'm all for the infrastructure as code, but my laptop is and always will be a, a pet. Yeah. Yeah, I think, but I think Ansible would make more sense uh, for this. But I haven't tried, haven't tried it. All right. So I think if, if that's all in terms of questions, uh, let's call it a day. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Samir, any parting questions? Um in the chat or no just a thank you great um yeah uh, well please do get in touch with us if you have anything uh, lingering on but uh, yeah great presentation anna thanks very much for that um, thanks so much um, yeah see yeah, you thank all. you bye see you all around bye, -bye. cheers thank you.